This is Tony Lombardo with volume 10 of Freddie Green Style Comping. And uh, I'm on tenor guitar tonight. As you know, sometimes it's tenor guitar, sometimes it's six string guitar. Let's kind of remind ourselves what we're doing, or what I'm doing. What I'm trying to do is improve my comping uh, style by infusing some of the techniques and elements of Freddie Green Style into mine. I'm not trying to do what he did. I can't do that. And even if I could, I wouldn't. Um, but he's way beyond me. Uh, this is a learning process for me. But and, and, and even if and even if I could, it wouldn't make any sense. I mean, Freddie Green's on an acoustic guitar with high action and bronze strings and a really thick pick, and here I am on electric strings. I mean, electric instruments with with flat wound strings, low action, uh, fair by jazz standards, a fairly thin pick, 0.88 nylon. Uh, and I'm always amplified, so um, I use the same pick for six-string electric guitar also. And those strings aren't particularly thick. It's uh, um, 52 to 13, I think, not that big for by jazz standards. Not when you guys, not when you have guys like, you know, Barney Kessel and and Barry Galbraith, you know, going like 70 to 17 or something. So pretty thin. Um, but I am trying to use some of Freddie's elements. Most of the uh, the volumes that I've done, almost all of them, have been based on emails. People have sent me and said, can you look into this, a technique or a song or something. Um, this is not an example of that. Uh, I decided I wanted to do the moving minor and I just picked up this tenor guitar and said, let's let's do it right now. So I'm kind of flying, a little bit blind here, but I've certainly done a lot of moving minor in my life. And even if you don't know that term, moving minor, you certainly know the sound. This is where you're making a minor chord, and then you move the root. While you hold the rest of the chord constant, you move the root down a half step, and then another half step, and another half step. Uh, like, let's say you're making a, I don't know, a G minor chord. And you're making a G minor chord, then it's a G minor major seven because it's got a G flat, uh, an F sharp in it. And then it's the G minor seven, it's got an F in it. And then it's G minor six, it's got an E in it. Uh, you can hear this in stuff like, um, what, Blue Skies, uh, My Funny Valentine, What Are You Doing for the Rest of Your Life, In a Sentimental Mood, um, from the rock era, things like. Stairway to Heaven or, or Jim Croce doing uh, Time in a Bottle. And it's pretty easy on stringed instruments to find a lot of different ways to play that. Uh, you can really, uh, on pretty much any stringed instrument, whether it be five string banjo, uh, tenor banjo, plectrum banjo, tenor guitar, regular guitar, mandolin, whatever, mandola, you can find a, a way to move that one note on pretty much every string of your instrument. I can certainly move it on all four of these. I'm going to move. I'm going to be doing the moving on the third string in this one. Um, the basic move is going to be. I'm holding the first finger on that F note, uh, fifth fret, fourth string. The third finger is going to play the D, which is the one. Then the middle finger is going to grab the D flat at the sixth fret. And then I'm going to move my hand. If you don't do that, it's going to be hard to mute out the, the middle two, the first two strings. So the middle finger is going to grab the F and the ring finger is going to grab the C right under it. That's a D minor seven. It's also going to be an F later in the song. Uh, this is going to be, I'm going to play the first finger on the fourth fret third string. That's a that's going to form my D minor six. It's also a G7 chord, which is really common in jazz. If you've got the the moving minor, the fourth chord of that, a lot of times the guys will just move up a fourth and play a dominant chord. So let's say you're in C minor, and you get to that, that C minor 6, they'll just play an F7 or F9. Really common. So this is D minor uh, 6. We're going to play a G7 or G9. Uh, and those same two notes work for both of those. Um, that's going to be the basics of it. So let's talk about the chords of the song very quickly, this Blue Skies. Because that's like that's the first example of this moving minor. I, 
I'm familiar with. There might be one earlier, I don't know it. The first bar is D minor, the second bar is uh, D minor major seven. Third bar is D minor seven, fourth bar is D minor six. Uh, fifth bar is F, sixth bar is C7, seventh bar is F, eighth bar is A7. That's going to be a little turnaround so we can get back to the top. Now, the next four bars are exactly the same. I mean, next, next eight bars, I'm sorry, the second A, A section. Exactly the same, except we're not going to play that A7 uh, turnaround chord. We're just going to play another F. And that's also going to be true of the, of the last A section after the bridge. Now for the bridge, it's kind of an interesting bridge. It's kind of repetitive in a way. Uh, it's a whole bar of F, and then two beats of B flat minor, two beats of F, two beats of B flat minor, two beats of F, two beats of B flat minor, two beats of F. That's the first four bars of the bridge. Second four are almost identical. F for a bar, B flat minor to F, B flat minor to F, and then the last bar of the bridge, bar A to the bridge, bar 24 of the tune, is simply an A7 chord. That's going to get us back to the top. And the last eight bars are going to be just like the, the A section, the, the second eight. Um, we're not going to do that A7. We're going to end on the F. Now, if you're going back to the top, if you're playing in a band and people are going to solo and do all that stuff, every time it goes back to the top, you're going to play the A7. Um, you just have to know if that's what the band's going to do or not. Uh, let's play the chord changes, and then we can talk about it. I ended on the F chord. If I was going back to the top, I'd play another A7. And basically the way these tunes typically go is somebody states a melody, either with a vocal or with a, a, an instrument. Somebody plays the melody. And then the various soloists take turns so, taking choruses. Um, and then when the, the melody is stated again, that's when you know we're not going back to the top. So at the end of that one, just end on the F and you're done. All right, so let's look at what I did technique-wise. I got my first finger on that F note, fifth fret, fourth string. That's the that's the minor third of D minor, and the ring finger's playing the D on the third string, seventh fret. And as you can see, I'm not playing the first second string, but I'm strumming them every time. There's your D minor major seven. The second finger's grabbing the the uh, D flat note. see I changed my fingering here I'm playing this uh, now I'm playing the F note with my middle finger and the C note on the fifth fret I'm playing with the ring finger and you say why did you make the change why do you just bar it like that well it's really hard to bar those two strings and to mute out first and second uh, you're gonna you're gonna notes are gonna leak through almost every single time seven, D minor six, which is also a G seven. Now we're going to go back to F. Now one fret back from that G seven or C minor six, whatever you're going to call it. Um, one fret back. I said C minor six. I meant D minor six. I'm so sorry. Uh, one fret back from this guy right here. Right here, that's a C7. I got my middle finger on the fourth fret, fourth string. First finger on the third fret, third string. That's the three and the seven of C7. It's also a G flat seven chord, uh, if that matters to you. But um, 
if you want to go back on some of the earlier volumes and you can see uh, the ones I did on tenor guitar, I talk about the 7337 concept where each of those dominant chords is two, two dominant chords, uh, a tritone apart. And I explain that, you know, in depth in those other episodes, those other volumes, you can see that. All right, so after I get to the F, C7, F, I went to the F7, that same exact dominant shape at the seventh fret. Middle finger on the seventh fret, fourth string, first finger on the uh, third string, sixth fret. That's the that's the uh, seven and the three of a seven. And we do those eight bars again. Now, this time we're going to go. We're going to leave those two fingers where they are. The middle finger on the fifth fret, fourth string, and the ring finger on the fifth fret, third string. And that's going to be our F chord. We were using as D minor seven. Now it's an F. It's the, the root. The F note is the root, and the C note is the fifth. And I'm going to bring that pinky around and grab that sixth fret, third string. And that's going to form a really nice B flat minor. all I'm doing. Uh -oh. And there's that dot, there's that A7 chord. And that's the whole thing. That's the whole tune. Uh, well, we're going to do it one more time, of course. And I'll play it. Like we're not going into any solos there, I'll end it on the F. If we were going into solos, I'd play that A7, get us back to the top. You know, we always turn things around on the five note. Um, and the first chord of the song was D minor, the five of that is A7. So that's how I would approach um, the moving minor through the on the tenor guitar through the lens of Freddie Green style comping. Now people will say, well, how do you know what 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 chord you're playing. I know that shape, but how do you know what chord it is? Well, whatever note your third finger on the third string is playing, that's, that's the minor chord you're doing. I'm playing the seventh fret, third string, that's a D. So that turns into a D minor chord. Uh, the third string is, uh, is G, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D. So if you were doing, say, an F minor, it would be the exact same deal. You would play um, the third finger is playing the 10th fret, third string, and that's an F note, so that'd be an F minor chord. So that's how you know. If you have any questions about this, uh, uh, send me an email at anthonycelombardo at gmail.com, and we can talk about it. Also, send some emails about what you might want for volume 11, either on guitar or tenor guitar, songs, styles, tempos, uh, substitutions, whatever you you like, because I'm trying to learn this stuff at the same time you are, and, and, and any of those ideas will be very helpful. Thank you, and I'll see you on volume 11.